Is that your settler on an island? No, it's not an island. I know, it looked like it over there. Here is the known world in the year 4000 BC, at least to the eyes of the Roman people. And you can already see things are going to look a little bit crowded. What is this over here? It's Monaco. So we are playing on a giant earth map with 22 civilizations and 25 city-states. In fact, I think default is to try to do like 40 city-states. Um, but even with 25, it's going to be really, really, really crowded. Hey, not so silent, Bob. This is a really big map, but there's going to be a lot of people here. Uh, that's why we're playing on standard speed instead of epic speed, because the turns are going to take longer to process, and so I wanted fewer overall turns, and so that's going to be fine there. And in fact, after having played on uh, epic speed for so long, standard's going to feel really, really, really quick. Anyway, I think I'm going to settle in place, because, I mean, we are loading a true start location mod. We should be in northern Italy, middle northish Italy, depending on exactly how they arrange the map. Hey, Tim Fury Fires, thanks for the resub. So, engage land war with winter, Russia in the winter, please. I'll see what I can do. So we're going to settle in place. No discussion. Done. And Rome. And that's the other thing. Normally, I name all the cities after subscribers. I hope you guys are going to be okay with the idea that I'm not going to rename the cities this time around. Uh, perhaps if the AIs settle cities in sort of, like, incorrect locations. I mean, their capitals should all be fine, but when they actually start settling and expanding, then we might rename them, and we might try to name them after, like, the actual cities that would be approximately there. I think, I think that's the right kind of vibe for this particular kind of game. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, here is Rome. It's a little resource poor right now, although you have to remember, we actually can't see most of the resources until we finished a lot of the technologies over here. Um, animal husbandry, for example, trapping will be another one, uh, and then finally mining, bronze working, uh, we'll have seen most of it at that point. We still need the calendar for bananas, but I don't really expect there to be much bananas in Italy over here. Hey, Pontus Rob, thank you very much for the sub. Wait, but Rome isn't a coastal city. Yeah, but you know, Rome also isn't almost the width of the entirety of the Italian peninsula here. So, you know, you gotta, it, things are a wee, wee bit fuzzy. So we got that going on. Um... And so I loaded up to make sure that everything was okay, and I took a couple turns to make sure there was no crashes. And what I've discovered is that we're going to be a little bit crowded. While normally you expect, okay, I'm going to have some room to expand, we're probably going to pop down a couple of cities, and then we'll start doing some things. Rome is sort of going to be a little one-city challenge-ish to start off with, unless we get out the sword. So Rome's going to be a bit of a, uh, a city-state, in a sense. So we're going to see. Uh, you have a list of all the cities in the game right now? No, I don't. We haven't discovered them. I don't know who the other civilizations will be. What I know so far is that Monaco, a city-state, is going to be to our north over here. So, what I'm going to do for the production is, um, I think I'm going to start, because I don't expect our scouts to be able to see much. I think the world's going to be too crowded to really get a lot of value out of a scout, or even to rush another warrior. So I'm going to go, like, Monument right away. Hey, Son of Stig, we might even follow it up with a shrine. Probably something like Monument Worker is what I'm expecting. I don't think we're going to get the same sort of value out of a scout. I mean, maybe, we'll see, but for now, I'm actually going to go Monument, we'll get some early culture um, for some extra, for the early social policy, which is sort of a throwback, hey Zeth, to some of the older strategies in Civ Five where you would go Monument first. Now, most people go Scout first, but I always feel like if the Scout has very little chance to find many goody huts, I don't think Scout First is worth it. If we were playing as one of the American civilizations in this map, lots of room over there, then I think Scout First would be incredibly, incredibly worthwhile. And maybe uh, maybe Africa, maybe in Asia, I think there might be less density, but here in, in Europe, things are going to be pretty crowded. Hey, SE, thanks for the resub. Uh, Crossy says, no Scout is pretty good. Played that map plenty of times. Excellent. Now, one of the things about this map is it's not randomized. And so, if you've played more than once, you know where a lot of the resources might be. Although, there's a lot of settings that you can change when you start your game that affects the resource production. But there's a lot of, kind of, non-random going on here. And so, there's the ability to develop strategies that go above and beyond normal, generic civilization play. So, we're going to do that. I'm going to be okay with it. In terms of research, I am going to start... I'm going to start with Animal Husbandry, because it does reveal a lot of different types of critters. Although... None of them... I don't think any of them can spawn in the woods. Hey, Sniper. Thank wow, 47 months. Thanks, Sniper. I don't think any of the uh, the animal husbandry stuff can spawn in the woods. Maybe there's, like, cows or sheep or horses over here. Hey, we got our first tip of the day from Professor Mackey. Thank you so much for your Unity videos on YouTube. Very simple and easy to follow. I heard you mentioned a place to learn C Sharp, but I can't find your mentioning it. Mind helping out? I don't know if I have a, space, a place specifically to learn C Sharp. 
I have places to learn programming in general. But I don't know about C-sharp. Probably just like for dummies book or something like that. I don't know. Ever heard of forest horses? <laughs> Um, I mean, so normally when I'm playing the community balance patch, I like starting animal husbandry often into pottery and then probably something like trapping bronze working like that reveals a lot of different resources over here. Um, we'll want to have the iron ideally so that we can build our legions. That's what screwed us last time. You remember we, we played as Rome. We we're going to go all military. We didn't have any iron within our borders, so we couldn't build our legions. We couldn't build our catapults. We still did semi okay. And then, um, actually we actually did really good. Then we overextended and we got punished for it. Hey, Snavy. Thank you very much for the resub, and for Star Flood, thank you very much for the resub as well. So I will start with Animal Husbandry, because I suspect on that flat area there's something. What about iron, though? Does iron show up where there's forest? We want iron. I don't know, I'm just going to trust that things are probably okay. So I'm going to start that way. It's a little bit unusual-ish. Well, I do start with the Animal Husbandry normally, but it's that. So I'm going to go north with the um, expectation that obviously south is going to be a dead end. We can explore it later. If there turns out to be a goodie hut there, well, it'll probably still be there for us. So let's see how it goes. All right, Monaco has gone and settled. <laughs> so right away, things are going to get a little bit tight. I'll go up on the hill to get a little more version. We also met Milan. Oh, Milan is over here. Milanese settler. <laughs> yes, things are going to be really, really, really tight. And I think this means we can't really make friends with some city-states early on. I'm, iron spawns on forest? Okay, cool. Um, so I think we're going to be planning early on to smash the hell out of some city-states. The advantage of this, though, does mean we probably don't need to build a worker. We can probably count on stealing a worker. In fact, what I probably count on is doing something like um, declare war, steal a worker, and then attack. One of the nice things in the community balance mod is the fact that... You see, we may already be dead-ended here, unless this worker or warrior moves... Um, one of the things in the community balance mod is that city's bombardment range starts at 1. The city's got to develop a bunch before it gets a bombardment range of 2 or even 3 later on. Um, and, oh my god, there's another city state up there too! And look, we're just sort of stuck here. I mean, I guess I can walk through their borders. I guess I'll have to do that. It's Geneva! Alright. If we don't explore anymore, and we don't meet anyone, I believe that means we're immune to the penalties and um, effects of someone pr claiming protection. Like, let's imagine that Germany or uh, France or something like that around here, and they pledge to protect the city-state, and then we declare war on the city-state, we might, you know, fight the, the civilization, which we don't want. But if we don't meet them, I don't think they can declare war on us. So I think, I think I just head back home with the warrior. Hey, Blue Shadow, thanks for the sub. Take all the city-states. Uh, I think the, uh, additionally, the diplomatic impact is far reduced. Like, I don't think you can get warmonger penalty against someone you haven't met yet. And I think even the other city-states won't be bothered if we haven't met them either. So I think what I do is I just get out here and I watch and wait. And I think our development plan... Okay, I'll finish the animal husbandry, but then we're going to go trapping so we can get early archers. So what I was going to say is we can put three archers, like, here. Right? And we should be able to bombard the hell out of the city without it being able to touch us. So we should be able to do really early city conquests. So I don't think we're going to need a settler. Warmonger penalty is applied to everyone? Okay. Well, then we're going to be warmongers. Uh, I guess I should pull back here and check the south at this point, since we've got nothing to do. We've got a Ragusa somewhere as well. A Ragusan warrior over here. Jeebus. Do we even know where, where they are? No, fine on that. We don't know where their city is. We have just met them as well. So we have four city-states already. We're in turn five. We've met four city-states. This is going to be really tight. Hey, hey, Dros! Thank you very much for the resub. Anyone you haven't met and haven't and haven't been met by those won't get diplomatic modifiers, but that no Monaco will be irritated to take it over. All right, so that's fine. We can manage with that. So yeah, we'll check out down here. I think if we stand here on this hill, we'll notice some more stuff too. So um, I will check out the rest of the boot uh, because if nothing else, it might affect how our borders decide to grow and also resources we find. We've got marble there. So we've got marble here, 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 here. We are marble-rific. Well, I mean, we don't reach any right now. 
But assuming we conquer Monaco and Milan, then um, we'll have plenty of it. That might be a big assumption. I don't know. So what do we want to do religiously then? We're not super close. I, actually, there's no real religion that's screaming out to me as being super important. So I'm just wondering, I mean, do we bother, do we get an early shrine or do we focus entirely on conquest? Valletta. Okay, another city state. This one's unlikely to get in our way. More marble down here, which is interesting and awkward. Because is there really room to put a city down here? I guess it'll depend when we get fishing, if there turns out to be a bunch of fish here. If there's a bunch of fish, then we can put another city down here. But if there isn't, then it's kind of a crap location. Although, luckily, there are a lot of coast tiles here, which are a lot better than ocean tiles. So they've got more food. <laughs> Iblis says, Quill, you're marvelous. Aww. Happiness on rivers, maybe? Yeah, there's ideas. Should buy the city uh, marble tiles before the city-states snipe them up? Yeah, I mean, um, buying tiles is pretty expensive. We could potentially get to this one, though. Again, we're not po popping goody huts for extra gold, though. We're just, we've got our flat gold gain, and that's about it. I haven't actually checked my tiles or really micromanaged that, which I should have done at this point to get a couple extra hammers to do, like, production focus, but then lock the food tiles. Actually, it literally makes no difference here. It might have made a little bit of difference um, with this tile here, but other than that, it literally won't make any difference to do the tile locking trick, so we won't do that. Wow, this is very boring over here. So there's the boot. What the hell are we going to do with it? Again, if it, hopefully there turns out to be fish. Actually, wouldn't crab and whales and stuff already be... I think those would always be visible. I think the only thing that's not visible from the start is the actual fish itself. So that's not great. Animal husbandry is in. Alright, we've got horsies way up here. Uh, speaking of buying tiles... We may do something like that, we'll see. I'm going to run my guy rack around here, because I think if we go here, we'll reveal a little bit more territory. Wow! Well, there is it! This is this is Roman, it looks with glory. Um, is it just me, or does it feel a little weak sauce? Rome does not get bored. Rome conquers. And yeah, that's definitely what we'll do. So the question is, what do we build after the monument? Do we go... Warrior into Archer. I, I think the Warrior would get built too fast. Uh, not really. It's very close. We could sneak out a Worker, but I don't think we're going to need that. I'm pretty sure we're just going to capture a couple of Workers. We might want to squeeze out a Shrine. Shrine, second Warrior, and then build, I think, three Archers, and then we'll be golden. We do have some money. Oh, I could get the Horses. And make sure they're within my borders. I'm not sure that matters. Well... No, because these are city-states. I can always enter the borders ahead of time. I don't think you get kicked out of a city-state's borders when you declare war or anything. So we've got 10 turns to trapping. Warrior would take 7. We'd have 3 turns extra. Uh, I could potentially just buy half the shrine. But if I save my money, I might actually be able to purchase an archer. Get the religion. Alright, let's squeeze out a shrine. And then we'll go Archer, 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 and a third warrior. Or, second warrior. I was thinking three archers. Any religion near impossible on the map wouldn't bother. Yeah, we'll get the shrine and uh, start loading some faith. Because faith, having faith in the bank is still going to be handy. But with 22 civilizations, I believe that includes me though. So with 21 other civilizations, most likely all the religions will be snatched up before then. But short-term Pantheon can be very, very helpful. So I think these guys just expanded their borders once. So they're unlikely to get the horses. 16 turns is a long time, though. And it's a decent tile with double food. Okay. You know what? I will pick it up. There we are. And you're working the correct tiles. The extra food there. It's not a fantastic tile, but it'll work. Okay, I like it. A little bit more growth for Rome. Alright, and that's it. That's everything we can see at this point. So I'm just going to go and park my warrior up on this hill. 
and or actually probably wait right by these horses and then we're gonna wait for one of these guys to spawn a um, a worker and then we'll go and steal that we can adopt our first policy so we're gonna do that I don't think rushing authority is gonna be that helpful here because I don't think barbarians are gonna be a thing in this game so this would give us plus one production in every city tributes okay we can you know get more stuff from a tribute we don't need the free settler, I don't think. I don't think rapid expansion is going to be thing. I think we grab tradition. Because the second thing in tradition gives you a building in your capital. It gives you plus three production, which is going to be huge for early conquest. It also gives us the plus two faith building, which, again, I don't know. We'll play that one by ear. But I'm really thinking tradition. Gives us some flat culture and food in our capital, which is going to be really good. I mean, our capital needs to get buffed as much as possible, because really, our capital is all we're going to have for now. Even when we take, like, Monaco and Milan over here, assuming that's going to happen. Of course it's going to happen. Um... Even when we take them, we are... They're just going to be puppets, which is going to be kind of annoying because we're going to be quite far away from courthouse tech. All right, so that's that. Rome's about to grow again. Very nice. Aesthetics. Oh, that'd be interesting. I mean, we can't do it now, but... Rome has grown, and I'm not going to rename it to Roma because what will happen is our next settler that we put down is going to try to make that city Rome, and it's just going to be really annoying for the rest of the game. So first Pantheon has been founded, God of the Sun, that's okay, we don't have any wheat. I, I mean, God of the Sun, even if you don't have wheat, the granary bonus is still nice, but yeah, Dad, thank you very much for the resub. So yeah, we'll find it, finish trapping a little bit before um, the shrine, which is a little unfortunate because like that's one turn later on our archer, but I will finish the shrine at that point, certainly. Be interesting if we get deer or bison. There could be bison here, I think. And of course there could be deer in the forest, I'm pretty sure. And that would be very nice to hook up. I gotta say one thing if we grab these cities. They're 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 pretty overlappy, which isn't great, but the roads will be pretty short. They're gonna be really overlappy. Okay, they've picked up that marble, which I'm okay with. I think it's fine. Uh, Carl, yes, the Project High Rise, I believe, will start hitting YouTube today, actually. Uh, the, uh, the live stream VODs well, should be hitting YouTube today. I just went and scheduled a bunch of stuff. There was a, a bunch of things outstanding that hadn't been scheduled yet. Borders of Rome had grown. Research is done. Trapping is in there. So what do we grab next? Again, I don't think we need a settler right now. There's nothing we can do with it. Although, going this way and getting trade is helpful for the economy. I'm thinking fishing. We have to get fish. It would be critical. And even if we, we don't have time to build a workboat, a fish tile will give us three food on a coast, which is pretty good. We could reveal stone, which is also helpful. I think getting the fish is actually what we want right now. And then probably go up to bronze working. So weird to avoid pottery, but I think I'm okay with that. It's just going to be a weird kind of game. Oh yeah, and the embarking will be super important. That's the real reason for fishing, so we can go out into the sea. Which, yeah, will be critical, because this is a big bottleneck. We're going to have to be able to go across here um, and hop against Monaco over there, probably with our extra uh, war warrior. So we're going to grab, I think, three archers, followed by another warrior. And I think that's going to be that. We could consider sneaking in a fishing boat, depending on how things uh, develop. So if this were an enemy civilization, I would actually prioritize getting this tile over here. But since it's a city-state and we can just enter their tiles, it's going to be fine. Quill, you will have no fish. Yeah, probably. We'll probably have no fish, no iron. So, I mean, it's already such a weak start. Like, wine's fine, although I'm betting that we'd have a very hard time getting a monopoly. Most advanced people in the world. So I'm 10th. I'm right in the middle of the pack. And we got another policy. So I'm going to grab Justice, which is going to give us the Royal Guard House in our capital here, which gives us three production by itself, and the AI has decided to put an engineer in there. Which is actually interesting. I mean, in a sense, we could grow faster. Four turns to the next citizen. This is only six turns to the next citizen. It's not that much further. The production difference is pretty stupendous. Shapes two, well, actually three turns off a lot of these archers. I think I'm in favor of this. Now, in terms of when we pop a great engineer, which will happen, well, right now it says 50 turns. I don't know if that'll be accurate. Uh, probably we just build a workshop or manufacturer or whatever it is. 
as opposed to saving them for a, um, a wonder, because an early great engineer by Rome for our production would be quite nice. I think, I think I'm, I'm happy with this. We're going to grow Rome a little bit slower, but the important thing is to rush these archers before the cities can build walls. That's very important. They can't get wa walls that quickly because they need, do need, what, construction? Masonry. Construction for that. Um, and the city-states, they tick up very differently, but we still want to hit them before they get that. It's less about the extra combat strength and more about preventing them from getting, like, a million hit points. Now you're saying I'm going to have a lot of late-game coal and uranium. Well, that's actually pretty useful, too. But, you know, if we have a slower start, that is going to be a little sucky. Um, Northern Africa may have a lot of oil as well. Depending on how the resource distribution works, we'll see how it goes. How much does it cost to buy an archer? Okay, another 84 that we're short, so yeah, we won't be buying an archer. See, already the turns take a fair amount of time. We go through the number of players pretty quick, but it sort of lags on the city-state step, because there's a lot of them. Goal is your main problem right now. Yeah, you're right. Money is going to be very, very tight. And I'm not sure we can do anything early that way. Well, I mean, getting the calendar will help, or the trade. I'm actually wondering, after fishing, if we just go up calendar so we can hook up a plantation on our wine, which will give us a little bit of money, and then trade for a trade route, which we'll obviously we'll have to build. But I don't know if we have to rush bronze working or iron working. I guess getting the wheel and connecting up our cities will give us a fair amount of money. Well, if I take this, then we will be able to get the marble. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, fishing, I'm going to continue anyway. But you're right. The money will be a bit tight. There's a gold building in tradition. Right. Is that the third level? Because the other one at the top is faith. No, that's science. And then... Gold over here. It's quite far down. And hello, workers. So, what I'm thinking is, I'm going to declare war on Monaco. I'm going to ignore Milan for now. Now, you could do the trick of you declare war, you steal the worker, and then you instantly peace out. But I think you get a penalty every time you declare war. Like, it, that, it's declaring war stacks up for some of your relationship with city-states. Therefore, I don't want to peace out. I don't want to do that trick. I don't think they're going to be able to, like, kill this guy right now. So it's going to be fine, and then we'll just pull away with the worker shortly. So we'll take some bombardment damage, but I don't think he can actually kill me. God, I hope not. City-state turn. I think it'll just be a bombard. Oh, he melee attacked as well, but yeah, he can't, he couldn't kill us, which is fantastic. So let's go back here. We're going to hook up these horses. I'm going to pull back here and just defend this guy. We're going to move our archer up to there. City cannot bombard us. The warrior will almost certainly just heal up. And we'll just go to the next turn. Yeah, he just I'm pretty sure he just sat there and healed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bombarding the city. Now, I won't be able to bring the city down, but it helps to keep the warrior from healing up. And I, he cannot bombard me. The city can't hit two steps away right now, which is fantastic. Um, and we've got another archer coming in two turns. And yet, we'll just build up to that. And we'll get three archers just sitting over here. We're going to ignore this worker for now. We'll get it later. It's fine. We don't need two workers right now. Uh, who is that? Chenex, thank you very much for the resub. You could farm some solid XP here. That is very true. Well, in fact, I think that's sort of going to happen because we're. You know, it's going to be a while before we can actually take Monaco. We are going to need all three archers, I think, to deal enough damage uh, since we don't have catapults at this time. So yeah, we'll hook up these horses. And yeah, this this worker, or this warrior will never be able to leave the city of Monaco. He'll always be too heavily damaged. So you can do that. Uh, I guess I gotta wait a little bit longer. One more turn before I can move this archer here. I don't want to leave a naked worker exposed. That would be bad. So you can say, we're not really doing anything to Monaco itself. But the warrior is actually going down a bit. I think they made it so that 
units inside cities won't actually die from bombardment, but can die from being melee attacked. If the, the city if the city gets melee attacked, then I think it will go. So I'm going to move the warrior to down here, move this archer to there to cover the worker, and bombard the city some more. And again, just keep that warrior pinned in there. And then, yeah, one more archer that we can put, say, right over here, and triple bombard the city, and that should get the job done. And then, yeah, we'll come in with a couple of warriors as a backup. We'll keep them just out of bombardment range until it's time to go and invade the city. We can just keep them at sea, because no one can hit me over here, unless my uncle develops archery. You go ahead and heal. Bombard. Bombard. And next turn. Rome, they also battled all their Italian neighbors. I mean, you got to remember, there was no Italy... Just like there was no Germany until very, very recently in history, um, in the grand scheme of things. So there were a lot of independent nations and city-states and things like that, so it totally made sense that there was a lot of warring stuff, especially in the Roman times. I mean, uh, we want the bonus versus cities at this point. So he did spawn an extra warrior, which is a little concerning, but not really. I mean, this guy can't reach me right now, so it's fine. Uh, I can't embark yet. Right, I'm one turn away from that, so Mr. Warrior, just stay there. Actually, stay here, just, I don't know, just to say. Get a different view. Now, if he does cross through here, obviously I'll have to bombard him, but then I think I'll be okay. Archers don't have a whole lot of melee strength, but this guy's going to have to soak a double bombard before it gets there. We actually discovered a bombarding, a barbarian cannon. Oh, because Ragusa's targeting someone. So there's fishing, which, okay, we have, we have an fish. An fish. Just a fish. A single one. That's really bad. I'm going to pop out over here just for vision, since I don't actually have to use, oh yeah, there's... You only have one tile of vision with the warrior. I think I'll pop him up on this hill just to look around. We don't need him to attack Monaco at this time. Do that. And actually, since we're not doing any real damage to Monaco right now, I'm going to take a second to move the archer over here, clearing up this space for this guy next turn. And these guys, yeah, they'll get they'll probably get a couple of accuracy levels just doing this, which is actually pretty fantastic. In fact, we'll probably get to accuracy three by the time it takes it comes to make a move against Milan. Which is going to happen immediately after this. Oh, shit. They just got their next level tech. That seems early. Okay. Horses are up. Working that tile. Getting a lot more production and food, which is great. Probably a farm here. Yeah. I don't see why not. Let's build a farm over there. That's going to be great. Do we want to go after mining or do we want to go after money? How's our economy right now? Kind of static. We are going to pump out one more unit, which is a little bit scary making. Um... Let's pick up the mining and the bronze working. I'm going to assume we have iron nearby. And then after that, we're going to try to get money. Calendar, trade. Okay. Pew. You're going to go over there. You're in pew. And yeah, warrior. That'll give us double warrior. Although, we don't really have places to drop two warriors. Well, I guess one can attack amphibiously. It's not great. It's really not great. Well, I guess I can actually, I can move these guys up here and put the warrior over there. That would actually be pretty good. Let me get some extra sight. Ah, hello, Carthage. How's it going? Uh, we don't have anything to trade, do we? I could sell you horses. Hold on. Hold your horses. Would you like two horses? For three gold per turn. How much would you give me for one horse? Okay, not as much. So... Two horses for three gold per turn is about as good as we can get right now. I will propose that. Dumb. There we go. That's going to be helpful. Excellent. We can get our accuracy promotion, plus 10% damage. And... Yeah, so I'm going to move these guys. I'll actually do it now, again, because we, we can't really do any real damage yet, so I'm going to take a moment. Because then what it means is I can put a... There's no river there, right? Yeah. So I can put a warrior here. He'll be able to one-shot, like, in one move, attack the city. And then my other one will be able to do an amphibious assault in case we need two. That is the end of my um, my military buildup. It should be sufficient, I think. But it still will take many, many turns to take Monaco. But we'll get plenty of XP along the way. All right, choose production. What are we going to do next? I'm going to get a workboat for the fishies. How far are we to grow? 21 turns. Do we want to spend the money to do this? Uh, God's the dude. Thank you very much for the sub. I think we will. I mean, I could build another warrior. I actually could fit maybe another archer in all this. I think three is going to be enough. Yeah, I'll build the workboat. Pew. Pew. 
pew. And you're going to go stand right over there. Yeah, we could put a fourth archer in here. 